Good morning students. So today we are going to discuss about a slip form technique. So which is a technique which is used in the construction of high rise structures in this third part of the lecture. Now let me move on to the next slide. So to start with let me give a quick introduction about this technique that is called as the slip form. So the slip form construction we also call it as the sliding form construction. So this technique is similar to extrusion process. So what happens in the extrusion process is the wet concrete is extruded rather than retained in the forms until it has hardened. So the slip form method is also similar to the extrusion process and this method is used for building the high rise structures very quickly. So in this method what happens is the concrete is placed at a predetermined rate on the top of the traveling form which emerges in a hardened state from the bottom. So concrete is shaped to the desired profile during the travel of the form. So in slip form if you see the form work moves semi-continuously with respect to the concrete surface. So this movement of the form work is at such a regulated speed that the concrete which you are seeing here that is when it is exposed it has uh, you know it, it is able to support its own weight and also it is being capable of resisting the, the vertical pressure from the concrete which is still in the form and also this concrete can withstand the lateral pressure which is caused by the wind. So this slip form technique is different from other forms in the sense that like the form ties are not used in the slip form. So if you see in the conventional method like if you want to build an RC wall you go for like you know the, what is the first step like you go for tying the reinforcement then you go for placing the shutter. So in between the shutters you go for placing a tie rod. So this tie rod is nothing but uh, you know it is nothing but it's a tensile rod which is used for resisting the lateral pressure of the concrete. Here in the slip form technique there is no need to have the tie rods. So, so if you see uh, in the initial days of slip forming if you see the wooden forms which are which are used in combination with the wooden screw jacks and wooden yokes were used. But nowadays if you see this uh, wooden forms are replaced by the, the metallic forms and it is replaced by the sort of the metallic yokes as you see in the picture and it is used with the hydraulic jacks. So the slip form construction technology was used to construct one of the notable structure which is about 345 meter high concrete shaft of CN Tower in Toronto in 1974. So in even in our country in India a lot of structures are constructed by using this technique slip form. So in one of the uh, like you can see it's an early construction in around 1988 the slip form technique was used to construct 235 meter high tv tower in pitampura new delhi so the slip form technique can be applied with great advantages to many construction projects like chimneys silos pylons lift shafts water towers telecommunication towers, bridge piers, stairs and elevated shaft cores, shaft linings, heavy concrete offshore platforms, oil platforms etc. So this technique should be resorted to where the continuous concreting is possible and where you have the monolithic structures. So uh, if you talk about the cost of the slip form, the initial investment which is required to construct the slip form is very high. But in the long term, if you see this uh, specialized construction technology proves to be economical because of the reduction in construction time as well as the labor cost compared to the other formwork systems. Here the high slipping speed and the accurate alignment of the concrete structures are possible with the applications of large yoke capacities and also with a better laser guidance. And uh, there are also other advantages offered by the slip form construction over the other 
other formwork. So here if you see you get a high quality surfaces and also you get a continuous moving monolithic structure. So the slip form construction it can be used both for the vertical structures as well as for the horizontal structures. For the vertical slip forming technique you know it can be used for constructing silos, chimneys, bins, caissons, bridge piers etc. Whereas horizontal slip forming is used for canal linings, tunnel inverts, highway payments, water conduits. So this is all the introduction about this specialized construction technology which we call it as the slip form. So uh, in our class today we are going to understand about the vertical slip form process. We are not going to focus on horizontal slip form. So we are going to see what is the vertical slip form. So in this picture you can see the, the sectional that is the complete view of the slip form technique. So let me explain to you what is there in this slip form technique. If you look at the components of vertical slip form it consists of the form panels which uh, just a minute. So if you see this vertical slip form, it consists of this form panels which you see in this violet color. This is called as the form panels. So these form panels, it could be made up of timber or it could be made up of the steel. And as well as it consists of the sort of the, the yoke assembly. So what you're seeing here, this is called as the yoke assembly and it consists of, this is the jacking rod. So you are seeing here this is called as the jacking rod and there is also we have this uh, hydraulic jacks or we can say mechanical or hydraulic jacks and then we have the sort of the working platforms and also we have this finishes pl platforms or we call it as the scaffold. So these are the components of the slip form. So I'll repeat one more time. So the slip form consists of the components like the form panels and then it consists of the sort of yoke assembly and it consists of the jacking rods, hydraulic jacks or mechanical jacks. It consists of the sort of working platforms and then it consists of the scaffolding platforms. So here you can see these form panels, they are supported by this yoke assembly at every 1.5 to 2 meter intervals. So you're, here you are seeing only one assembly, but the wall will be running throughout, that is it will be running on the longitudinal side. So this yoke assembly will be supporting the wall panels, that is form panels at every 1.5 to 2 meter intervals. So this form work as you see here this moves with the help of this mechanical jack or we can call it as the hydraulic jacks so this jack it climbs on this pipe or a solid rod which is embedded inside the concrete so this pipe or the rods you know as you see here this is the pipe or the rod we call it as the the climbing rod or we call it as the jacking rod so here the load from the shattering the working platform finishes platform or the scaffold they all get transferred to the the jacking rods through the jacks so these jacks also have the gripping devices that could be either the tool type or the ball type so the sliding speed of this formwork you may be like uh, uh, thinking about what could be the sliding speed of the form so here the sliding speed of the form it depends primarily on what is the setting time of the concrete what is the ambient temperature of the concrete and what is the type of the cement used so here like uh, uh, it is just contrast to the conventional form like while pouring the concrete this form panels moves semi-continuously with respect to the concrete surface and the concrete when it is exposed it has the sufficient strength to resist its own weight to resist the pressure and the lateral pressures caused by the wind so that is why we say the slip form method is similar to the extrusion process so if you see during the initial days the vertical slip form method was used only for the structures which are having the uniform cross sections nowadays with the recent development it is possible to slip form the continuous vertical floatings and even it can be used for the varying cross sections 
sometimes if you see it is not possible to form the projections in the structure for example the walkways within the forms during the actual slide so for constructing the projections what we do the dovels are bent to fit within the forms which are straightened and it is done later it is cast later so the openings for the doors and windows at different locations are normally they are not attended at the time of this sliding process so block outs for the doors and windows and inserts or pockets to take beam are placed inside the form as the slide progresses and this can be attended later so this is all about the, the slip form process so next we'll un, uh, you can see the diagram that is the schematic view of the straight slip form process see some of the uh, the typical structures which are constructed using this sort of the straight slip form techniques or the silos chimneys water towers columns etc so here uh, if you see um, these type of uh, slip form uh, technology uh, can be used to achieve the maximum benefit if you do the planning at the early stage and here you can clearly you can see the the schematic diagram of the straight slip form method and also uh, that is uh, i think the same diagram that i think i have given you in the previous slide that is the 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 a 3d view of the slip form technique and here you can see the schematic view the sectional view so you can see this is the form panels and you can see these are the working deck and this is the the scaffolds and that is the hanging scaffolds and here you can see this is the yoke assembly which is comprising of yoke legs and the yoke beams and this is the hydraulic jacks and at the center you can see the jacking rod which is embedded inside the concrete